Right. Welcome, everyone, to this evening's Couples Retreat. I am your pastor, John Slaughter, and we also have Lady Monica behind the camera with us this evening as well. We also want to thank those that have come tonight to share uh, in this couple's retreat and those that may be online. Uh, we want to take some time and thank you for coming as well. Um, before we get started, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, think about it. Um, take some time and um, get a word of prayer and your scripture. Okay, and then after that, we will have a scripture reading uh, from Lady Monica. And then uh, we will have announcements and then get into our topic of discussion, which I'm uh, very excited about. Uh, another awesome topic being selfless being selfless um, it's going to be powerful Father we thank you uh, this evening we thank you God for allowing us Lord to yet come one more time to give your name glory one more time to uplift you one more time to praise your holy name God, we ask that you and only you get the glory through this service. God, we ask that you would send your heavenly angels in this place to set the atmosphere for your glory to fall tonight. Let someone be touched. Let someone be saved. Let someone, Father, find a new veil for you, for their marriage, for their relationship. Father, let someone stand up and stand on you as their foundation through this ministry as we go forth tonight. Touch us and guide us. Father, speak through us that it not be none of us, Lord, but all of you. God, we thank you and we honor you. It is in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. 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 Good evening, everyone. Um, we're going to be reading scripture from Ephesians, Ephesians 5th chapter, the 15th and the 16th and the 17th. Pay careful attention then to how you live, not as an unwise person, but as wise, making the most of the time, because the days are evil. Mm. So don't be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. Mm. And I read from you, read to you Ephesians 5th chapter, 15th through the 17th verse. May God bless the hearers and the readers. Amen. 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 So the announcements. Um, Again, join us uh, this Sunday, 3331 Blue Ridge Road. Um, we will have service Sunday morning, 8.30 a.m. We are here one hour. And then next Thursday, uh, we will not have service here um, at the church. Um, so... Stay tuned to Facebook, and we'll send a message out to everyone uh, about service uh, on next week. Um, and then the following Thursday as well, we will not have service physically here, uh, but stay tuned uh, on Facebook. And again, we will send a message out about that as well. Um, and then also, you know, we are very... Well connected uh, in social media, you have to be these days. Um, you can follow us on Twitter at TMTWC1. And then you can also find us on Facebook. If you've ever missed uh, any service, whether it be Sunday morning service, 
uh, couples retreat, Bible study, or ministry of love. You can go to Facebook and just search for TMTWC. Click on our page and you will see every message, every video that we've ever done. Uh, you can also find us on Facebook the same way. Uh, search TMTWC and you will see us and you can follow us there. Uh, Instagram, TMTWC9, nine being that month that we launched. And then of course our website, TMTWC.org. And if this is your first time with us, TMTWC stands for the Master's Touch Worship Center. So uh, please, 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 please join us, uh, follow us on social media. So this evening, I kind of wanted to start out uh, on this topic of being selfless is um, kind of giving a difference between selfless love and selfish love. Um, and just to kind of, uh, as, as just a start, selfless love knows love is limitless. There's no limit to love and selfless love. So what, what's the difference between selfless love and selfish love? Well, selfless love accepts. You know, when you, you know, are married and uh, you start growing and, and knowing each other and uh, as your love grows, there's some things that come up and come out that you have to say, you have to have an open discussion about, some things you gotta accept and move on and say, hey, goes with the territory. Um, selfish love withholds. Selfish love, it withholds. It holds back, you know? I don't want you to know all about my past. Uh, I don't want to share, you know, my intimate details about myself. You know, that's what selfish love does. And selfish love is total in total contradiction of what the Bible says. Uh, selfless love comes from a place of abundance. Abundance. Uh, selfish love comes from a place of fear. That's deep. That's deep. You know, usually if you find someone who's very selfish in their love, it, it nine times out of ten comes from a foundation of fear mm -hmm. where they've been hurt or something has happened in their lives um, that has made them uh, not want to love, not feel free in love. So they have a fear. So they only give just so much, but they want it all to come to them. They want everything to come to them, but they don't want to really give too much. So selfish love comes from a place of fear. Selfless love never ends. Like we talked about a little earlier, I mentioned that it's limitless. And selfish love isn't always wanted. It is not always <laughs> wanted. Lady Monica over here playing with me. Um, so just a couple things that I wanted to, to bring out, but we're gonna go ahead and, um, you can take that off, lady, I don't want your phone to slip off. Um, we gotta share this. Uh, so, the first thing that we have down here, and what we're going to talk about tonight again, is being selfless. What does it mean to be selfless? Wow. Well, there, there's, and I doubt if we get to all of these, 
but there's there's 12 things that we found that encompass selfless love and, and what selfless love means and the first one is that well my first one is you have to have prayer in a selfless loving relationship uh, prayer is a must and not so much as just praying for yourself but praying for that other individual Girl, say that loud and Even clear. when you don't feel like it. I mean, let's be real. Um, you're in love. You're married. Life happens. You're dealing with yourself. You're dealing with your spouse. You're dealing with your children. You're dealing with job and, you know, your family. And um, it's, not all, it's not easy. People always say, you know, pray for me. And, you know, especially when it's someone that's, close to you that you deal with every day and that has your heart and who also knows how to take, you know, pull that string. So it is hard um, sometimes to pray, you know, not for me. I, I think I pray more when, I mean, I pray for him every day, um, but I know when he and I are not walking down the same street in the same direction like last night yes and however it makes me want to pray for him more um i desire that that's because of the relationship that i have with god um but do i always want to do it mm, no um um and then i know that in the prayer i sometimes want to say god i need to work on him again <laughs> <laughs> but we know prayer doesn't work that way. God doesn't work that way. But um, it's it's not easy to pray all the time, especially when you're upset or you're cross with your mate. Um, would you agree? Totally. Totally. Um, last night um, was a wonderful example of um, not wanting to pray. Um, and I don't know, you know, we haven't really even talked about it yet, but it was just something, I don't know what it was. We both were just kind of off and... And we could sit here and pick, pick yeah. what may have set it off, yeah, yeah. but that really wasn't it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So anyway, I got to bed pretty late. Um, I was up working, working mm -hmm. doing some work um, with my business partner. And then I had to go get our son. He went to the movies. Mm -hmm. So got in a little later than usual. Uh, Lady Monica was already in the bed because she gets up very, 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 very early in the morning. And I came to bed and my flesh was like, just go on to sleep. Just don't, <laughs> don't even pray. And then even when I leaned over, Lady Monica got away and she don't even realize it. She even said, baby, I'm sorry. I pray about this. But I would, I touched her, and her hand kind of went down, like, and I was probably in my feelings. I was like, oh, she ain't even want me to touch her, and she sleep. So how could she not want me to touch her? She sleep. But anyway, that was the enemy mm -hmm. in my head, like, look, she ain't even want you to touch her. She sleep, and she ain't even want you to touch her. And I was like, yeah, yeah, you know. But beyond, I had to get beyond myself, and it wasn't an elaborate prayer that I usually pray. <laughs> but I was selfless and I prayed for her like I usually do for us and went through. It didn't last too long, but it was a prayer. But see, what I had to realize, you know, in being selfless, it's not something you always feel like doing. And it's not a happy feeling all yeah. the time. Right. You know? Right. It's, it's, and it's not a happy feeling all the time, you know? And I know, um, you know, women, let's be real. Um, we are the strongest creatures because we can change a whole environment. Mm. You know, just by walking in the room and not saying one word, our body language, 
mm. can just mm. set the tone. And I know um, that are, there are times that I, I do that. And um, um, <laughs> I, there are times I know I do that. And, um, and I know um, it's hard for um, Pastor Slaughter. But let me tell you what he does. Uh-oh. He rises above it. Um, he doesn't always, you know, I would say 95% of the time, 98.7% of the time, he's positive with it. You know, he'll always, he'll come like, is everything going okay? Or he'll just stay back and then he'll say, you know, he does the whole, uh, you okay, you want something, you know, but very careful, you know, and um, and I appreciate that. You know, ladies, sometimes we just have so much going on, it's hard to sometimes convey that to the males because, you know, they think in the moment, we're thinking like the moment, tomorrow, the hour, the next week. So it's sometimes it's hard and he gets that. You know, and then there's other times he's like, she, she gonna write like that? I'm gonna write like that too. So, but that's the 2.3% is when he do that. And I appreciate that in him, um, not allowing his flesh, you know, to react to the spirit that's in me, that gets in me. Yeah, and then, and just in the same way, um, I know no one believes this about me, but he likes to paint this picture of this white wall that is so clean. <laughs> no, no I, I, no, I'm not. But I can get in my ways. But don't dress it up like it's and, like so far back. Uh, well, I, it's not a lot. Of it. <laughs> it doesn't matter though. Yeah. So you know when I and, and you know and, I, and I'll say this. And I, I've, I've shared this before, you know, one of the times in my life where I was at the lowest point that I have ever been in my entire life. And that was when I had ruptured my Achilles tendon and I was selling life insurance full time, straight commission. And you guys have heard the story before. Three months sitting on that couch not able to do anything. Went in a deep, 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 deep depression. And even last night, I was praying gospel music and just praising God. And um, I got teary-eyed because I thought about that. And I thought about how this woman, she didn't look at me where I was at that point. She didn't talk to me that way. Now, what she talked to her friends about, oh, or, well, I mean, that, but what I'm, what I'm saying, though, is that you have a best friend right. that you got to let some some steam off sometimes. I got, you know, my boy, I'm going through some stuff. I don't want to have it at the house. I'll call him, bro, you got to pray for me. You know what I'm saying? So, but one of the things that I so appreciate about that whole time is that she never pointed her finger at me. You need to do this. Look at this situation where, and a lot of women I know would have done that. Would have been like, you need to be doing this. You, you got to do something. You can't just sit here and do nothing. Yeah. I remember that one day she came home and just so sweet and just, she was like, hey, hey baby, um, and I forget how she says it. Monica has this way of saying things, but she was just like, you know, you may, you know, feel a little better if you took a bath, you know? And it was just, the way she said it was like, ah, oh. you know, and I'm just beating myself up, just, a man, I'm a provider, and I can't do this, and I'm just Satan just having a field day with me. But this woman, at my lowest, lowest, lowest point, still was selfless enough to be concerned about me and lifted me up any 
time she could through that through that moment and I will never in my life because I'm telling you a lot of marriages may not have made it through that you get so caught up in where you are bills getting behind collectors calling food I mean a lot of a lot of stuff was going on man um, but, I mean I don't want to belabor that's and, um, and and like I've always told her that's a part of our testimony, man. You know, and I, I, I'll get, y'all know, I get going off on stuff. But um, two examples of being selfless. So I want you guys, whoever's watching, you know, make a list for yourself. Yes. You know, make a list for yourself. Um, you know, husband, wife, you know, boyfriend, girlfriend, or fiance, whoever, make a list for yourself. And on the things that you deem important in your relationship that example that exemplify selfless selfless love so um you know prayer is on the top of our list you know everybody's list is different no order is no point intended but um yeah just take a moment make a list and kind of put in what that that sentence mean and kind of bullet point it and kind of share those things with your spouse to see if you guys are on the same page. You know, one of the things about being having selfless love is being on one accord, you know, and being willing to be open for other ideas and talking to your spouse about, you know, some of the things that you may be concerned about um, in your relationship with, you know, in your marriage. So without, without having that, there's no order. You know, there's, you know, Satan finds a way to get in when you haven't put some bullet points, you know, to the, to your relationship, you know? So, um, you wanna go to that? So the second one that we have on here is have a proper mindset. And it says, it all starts with, with a proper mindset. Remember that you are in a relationship so things are not always about you. Wow. Hmm. And you have to think about your partner's well-being. You have to consider his, her wants and needs. You have to be willing to do selfless acts. And you have to understand the value of being selfless. Only then you can become one. That's good. That's good. So... What that means also is that <laughs> you can come into a marriage and not have the right mindset. And that means you have to be humble enough to not, well, to understand that, you know what? My mindset Ooh. may not be right. <laughs> And, and guess the best way to find out if your mindset is right. It's right here. It's this all word, right here. It's this right here. word will let you know if you have the right mindset. Mm -hmm. and, and that goes again to what we talked about earlier in one another couples retreat. Just because what happened in my parents' house, it does not mean that that works in our house. It doesn't mean that. We have to do what works best for us in our house. And, and that also um, requires you to, you know, look at you. If your partner, if your wife or your husband have, have an issue with the way you do things, or the way your mindset is, and you can't say, well, that's just how I am. You know, you can't just say, well, you're trying to change me. Um, if you're in this word, um, and you're really deep into it, because it really takes, you know, you to actually, because this Bible will make you look at yourself and see how dirty you are, and you shouldn't think so highly of yourself that you do. So, um, so with that, you know, I know it's hard when you come from 
different relationships and you don't want to take ownership on some of the things that are going wrong in your marriage because you deem yourself to be perfect. You know, I'm, I'm doing this, I'm a provider, I come home, I don't hang out with the boys, I don't cheat or I don't go out with my girls. So what, why, you know, why are you making a big deal? Why is this such a problem? Um, but you know, the way we think is not always right. And, um, and you have to be able to be open-minded to um, looking at yourself and seeing where you can be better. You know, it's easy to, for me, it would be easy for me to look at slaughter and say, well, you know, you're this, you need to change this, and you always do this. But then what about myself? You know, I want him to change, but we're not so open for the other person to change because we can always see, well, this is your way of thinking and you think and do this, you don't think when you do that. Um, so we have to learn how to, that, and what that has to happen is you have to have an open communication. You gotta have open communication, you have to have a, a safe zone. But then you have to be willing criticism. You know, to have an open mindset, you gotta have criticism, you gotta be able to take it. Yeah. And and with that criticism, like we were telling our oldest son a couple nights ago, it's not what you say, yeah. it's how you say it, you know? And, and, and one of the things that I'm learning, the more and more I grow in Christ, and the deeper I get in my relationship with him, I'm learning the more how much I have to fight this flesh. How much I have to fight this mind. It, it just amazes me once I realize how much of me that I must change because it don't line up in this word. It don't line up in that word. Mm. And, 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 that's, and I think it's harder for men. Mm. Be real. Because men, we're taught, I'm the man. What I say goes. Mm. I don't cry. I'm hard. You do what I say. You do that. And that ain't, that's the furthest thing from what the Bible talks about, about man being ahead of the household. You can't be ahead of your household unless you got Jesus Christ as your head. And if you got Jesus Christ as your head, he walks in humility and love. That's how you rule your household. I don't want to get going off. No. Um, so, number two, and you just kind of talked about this a little bit, you have to learn to compromise. It's not one way all the time. You know, I can't come in the house and everything that, every decision that I want to make and everything that I want to do can't be all about me. I can't say, well, I'm the man, so it's going this way. Well, I'm the man, we're going this, we're doing this, we're doing that, we're doing that. What I realized, and one of the reasons that I married this beautiful specimen of a woman, is guess what? She had it going on when I met her. She had things together. She was sharp, and anybody that knows her, she's on it, mine, I mean, just sharp. So what I had to do as a man is I had to say, okay, what characteristics does this sharp, intelligent, smart woman bring to the table that we can use to help lift up the family? You know, I, I had a conversation with someone a few weeks ago, and they made a mention to me when they were watching one of the uh, couples retreats, I had made mention about uh, having Monica take over the finances. And we had talked about that. And, you know, they were just like, well, you know, you're the man. 
You know, you're supposed to, you know, take, and you know, my response was just that, well, as the man, I want to do what's best for the household. Not what makes me feel like I'm a man. And see, one thing that my wife would tell you, I don't need nobody to tell me nothing that I'm a man. I don't need to beat my chest. I don't walk in the house. You need to, I'm the man in this household. I'm this and that. I, uh -uh. When you walk in the authority that God gave you through his son, Jesus Christ, you don't have to tell nobody nothing. They should feel your presence. They should see the man that you are. Hmm? Okay. So, you know, one of the things that I, that I, I was speaking with this individual, I said, we have to do what's best for our household. Now, once we talked and she kind of, you know, shared some things with me and I shared some things with her, we was like, you know what, okay. I am doing this. I, I can get this. So I continued to, to walk in that veil, but I was humble enough to say, hey, that's one of your strong points. Let me hear what you have to say about that. Let me, maybe you need to take over this. Um, and that, um, <laughs> and, and that, you know what, for ladies, um, and for that compromise to happen, and for me to be able to, um, uh, allow him to be the man, I, I had to learn how to be submissive. And I had to be that before I met him. Um, and God was preparing me for that. So not that I compromise much of anything, I'm just obedient. And and I feel that I, I'm at peace with that. So I, I know the kind of man that John is, and I know that he loves the Lord, and he loves me. So he wouldn't do anything to compromise his relationship with God, nor with myself. So um, me being submissive, I don't really have to learn how to be compromising. I, I'm just submissive when I need to be submissive, you know. Because um, to me, compromise is kind of like, I like the word. Um, I think you kind of got to know how to pick it back. You know, what, what, and it has to be something that works in your household. You know, everything um, can't be, you know, some people are better having separate bank accounts. Um, and, it, and it works for them. Um, but then that's where, you know, the communication comes in at, and the proper mindset and the prayer. You know, those things have to come up to end up being compromising because you can't compromise if you don't have prayer. If you don't have the proper mindset, if you don't have the communication, you can compromise all you want. It's not going to stand because someone's gonna get, you know, riled up because you know you're not being compromising enough. There's gonna be something that that you're not gonna agree with, and and you have to understand that you're not gonna always agree. You're not gonna always be able to come to a a compromising, you know, environment. But then you have to respect one another. And then, you know, John knows when, you know what, even though he's the man, you know what, I'm just going to let that, let you have that, so to speak. And then me, I'm just like, you know what, I, you, know, you know your place. You know, everybody has a, a place. It's not so much me saying that I'm the wife and I have my place and he's the husband, just in certain situations, you know? Awesome, awesome, awesome. All right, so... Okay, so the fourth one is put yourself in your partner's shoes. It is so easy to judge a person if you don't put yourself into his, his or her shoes. Same goes with having a partner. Instead of jumping into conclusions, um, jumping to conclusions, trying to understand whether your partner is coming, where your partner is coming from, he or she may be going through a tough time, and he, she, he or she may just need a little bit of your help and support. Um, and broaden your um, his or her perspective, and try to make try to be more understanding, and be the first person to pick him or her up instead of letting him or her be down. You know, um, this is so good because um, 18, 2018 guys was like uh, a tsunami. <laughs> I just want to tell you guys that 
Um, my husband started off working, and then he, he lost his job, and then he started, it, and it, not just that, we just had so many, you know, down valleys. I mean, it was like, it's, it's like the hill went like this. We went up, and it just dropped, and we kind of stayed in the valley for a little bit. But you know what? Every time we had something that going on, I always, because he's a man, and I know how he loves his family, he loves God, he loves providing, I always put myself in his shoes. Before I got upset, and it could have, it could be something very, 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 very minor, but I had to know where he was at the time and why he, he responded that way. So there are times that he gotten upset, and I said, I'm gonna go to the store. I'll go with you. I said, no, I need to be alone. <laughs> and so that would give me time to um, think about how, what's, what he's going through, how it's affecting him, how it's affecting his, his thoughts, his actions. And so I knew that he was going through a tough time. So instead of me saying, you know, what is your problem? Like, you know, why are we, why are you, snapping at me or why are you coming at me like that like I didn't do this to you I just put myself in his shoes and I had to pray about it I said Lord you know help my husband clear his mind lift him up you know give him the strength give him the wisdom but instead of you know making him feel bad so every time I put myself in his shoes that's good that's good um and I've said this before you know one of the things that as a self a selfless act that I do is and putting myself in Monica's shoes. When we first got married, Monica was the type of individual. You keep saying was. Like was. Like, what are you doing? I'm not that anymore. No. Oh, okay. Not okay. not what I'm about to say. Oh, okay. Oh wow. She she was the type of individual. Nobody comes in the kitchen. I don't need your help. You just get in my way. This woman would work all day, come home, cook, feed everybody. After she fed everybody, go back in the kitchen, wash dishes, clean it up, and that was her routine. So I'm seeing this and I'm like, hold on, man. I work every day and I come home, I'm exhausted. So I know she's exhausted. So what I had to do, well, what I did, is I had to work my way slowly <laughs> in the kitchen. And I think, you know, we've shared this before, but now 95% of the time after we eat dinner, I'm picking up her tray. I'm picking up her plate. I go in the kitchen. I clean the kitchen. Why? She worked just like I worked. And she come home, she tired, but you know what? Selflessly, she cooks for us. So I had to look at that and think about that. Like, you know, what can I do to help this woman in this area? And again, you know, we've said this before, a lot of our little entanglements we get into is because we're not allowing each other to help each other yeah, enough. We wanna, we wanna and we it gets, yeah. we have to really like step away from each other sometimes. Like, she won't even let me, you know, or she was, and then if, if, if she wants to do something for me, she was like, what, I can't do nothing for you? And then I know, okay, yes, baby, you can. Okay, what's the next one? <laughs> I, 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 that leads us what, into the next one. Oh, that leads us into yeah. the next one. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Learn to appreciate your partner's interests and passions. Wow. You need not pretend that you like gaming or that you're crazy about art just as he or she does. However, at least learn to understand why he or she are or passionate about these things. Take interest in doing the things he or she enjoys the most. Focus on how his or her eyes sparkle whenever he or she writes a poem or how she 
giggles when she wins her favorite game. You end up loving each other even more. And you know, that's one of the things, if anyone that was at the last masters, I mean, the last couples retreat, you know, we both shared, you know, some things uh, that we're doing. I think we were doing our things that we're gonna do in 2019, uh, renewing our vows. And one of the things that Monica said was so awesome to me. We've been talking about it. We've been getting so excited. She knows my passion and love for golf. Golf for me is like my escape. It's like my mini vacation. It's like um, a woman being able to go on a shopping spree with an unlimited credit card, like black card. So that's how he feels about golf. And I laid him out last time. And I, anytime I say golf, his eyes just twinkle more than just about when I, he says Monica. But, um, <laughs> but um, this is so important because if you don't take interest in your spouse's um, interest, um, you lose them because then they start excluding you, you know, and then you're like, well, why do you ever invite me? Well, you always, you know, make a face when I say I'm going to do this or, you know, um, or have something to say or trying to get me to do something else when it's time for me to do that of something that I enjoy. And you know, we have to understand that we are individuals. So we're not gonna like the same thing, but I can at least take interest um, in what he likes. So, you know, one year for his birthday, um, I like I know that he liked golf. I got him a day at the golf, and then I made sure I bought breakfast. So I got him a gift card for breakfast, and then a gift card for lunch. You know, because I wanted him to have the perfect day. Even though I couldn't be there, but I wanted him to have the, the perfect day. So, and it, you don't always have to be there, but support it, you know? And I think that means a lot. Yeah, yeah. And you know, what's so powerful about that, you don't have to take an interest in everything. It's not It's not what we're, what, what we're saying, but something, you know, like my wife, she loves word games. I mean, loves them. And one thing that I had to get used to, um, my wife is so, I mean, her mind is like this. Anybody that knows Monica, she's one of them sisters that's just on it, everything. Just boom, 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 boom. So when we're watching TV, she's playing a word game while we're watching TV. I had to get used to that. Because at first, I took it as, you know, this is our time. Hey, you sitting there playing a game and we trying to watch, but that's how she is. So what I've learned to do is when I'm playing some games, and you know, like when you play games on your phone, they show other games you can get. I've sent her <laughs> two or three word games and I'll get home and she, oh baby, thank you, I love that game. I mean, and she, and I'm just like, you know, I mean, I, I've tried to get into it, but it's. You won't play Scrabble with it's, you. It's, no, it, it won't even be a game. It won't even be a game. But, and again, this, just a couple of examples of taking an interest and in not just yourself. You know, it's so easy in, to just, it all be about you and what you want and how you want things to be. That's not how, if, if Jesus did that, I mean, where would we be? We'd be lost. We'd be gone. You know? Want we'll comment? Okay. Mom, mom. mom Slaughter said, always have an open ear to listen to each other. This thing goes both ways. Mm. <laughs> Amen. That's good. Amen. That's good. Amen. Amen. All right. Um, so, ooh. <sighs> This is a whole nother couples retreat by itself. By itself. Learn to forgive. Wow. Learn to forgive. You want me to read this first or you want to say something? No, go ahead. You may forget, but. Um, so, you know, when John and I first got married, um, because know you kind of pick up habits from your your family your parents you know the way they do things and um 
when John did something that, you know, made me a little cross, I wouldn't forget it. <laughs> and I would walk around the house. Oh, wow. Yeah. Like, evil Lena, you know. Um, <laughs> not, like, nasty to him, but I would just hold it. And, um, and every time I would hold it, let me tell you, I had a headache and a migraine. And I would pray to God, and God would be like, you're ain't right. What are you praying to me for? You haven't even forgiven your husband for doing something, and you want me to, to heal you? <laughs> so I had to learn to let things go. And that came with communicating. And then we can't sweat the small stuff, you know? And, and don't be so um, big and so thinking that you can't forgive or forget someone or even say that you're sorry to someone that needs to forgive you. You know, in a lot of marriages, I know that um, pull grudges, you know, it could be something silly like leaving the dish in the sink or forgetting to do something or not saying um, I love you before you walk out the door, whatever. But they will allow that to fester and all you need is a small thing to turn into a mountain mohill. I mean, just like go crazy. And that, that tears a relationship up, you know, that, and you, you take that and then you combat that with another issue and with another issue. And now you're just walking around just angry with your spouse, you know, and everything that they say and do, you, you criticize it. And you remember every single thing, something that happened 10 years ago. Well, you know what you did to me 10 years ago? And still haven't let it go. And you wonder why you don't have that closeness. And you want to blame it on him or her on something that the way they're acting. But it's because you haven't allowed yourself to forgive. You know, and forgiveness is for you, not for them. That's good. That's good. Um, I'm just being So, no, that's good, man. Uh, being in a relationship doesn't only mean giving that person a chance to love you, but also give him or her a chance to hurt you. At some point, your partner will commit mistakes. You will see his or her flaws, but loving selflessly means loving the person even with those flaws, accepting them wholeheartedly, and at the end of the day, learning to forgive. Mm, wow. And that is just so, so powerful because, you know, there's so many marriages that you're, you're together for a certain period of time and you get to a point where you may not be talking or you may not really want to be around each other. And then when you get in that, that, that place alone and you start to reflect, it's always the same thing. How did we get here? What happened? And you know what happened? Number one, you didn't communicate. Prayer, because see, communication drives away so much. That was one of the things that we learned in our marriage early on. And because Monica came from a household, no communication. It, it didn't exist. You know, I, if anybody knows me, I'm a talker. I'm a communicator. So is his I, yep, my mom, that's, <laughs> yep, where I get it from. We just, that's just, you know, who we are. We, yeah, yeah. we're going to talk about it. So one of the things um, through that is God showed me that about Monica and then he showed me how to bring that to her attention in a way where she saw the evidence of what communication would do you know it wasn't just like why don't you never talk you know blah, 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 blah. no it was like you know give an opportunity you know do little things to shot massage in different ways conversation you know, be vulnerable. That's what I, you know, brought up about, you know, I'm going to be vulnerable right now. 
you know, a safe area to talk. And then I showed her, baby, see how through our communication, where we were before and now where we are after. Oh, yeah. And I mean, it's, it's like night and day. Oh, yeah. It's like night and day. Yeah. But you have to have an environment where everybody is safe. You can't have an environment where if I lay my heart out to you and then you pick my heart up, throw it on the ground and step on it, I knew you felt that way. You should have, eh, 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 eh. <laughs> And then it blows up and then guess what? Some people, uh -huh. like my wife, be like, oh, that's how you are? Okay. It'll never happen again. Duly noted. Okay. <laughs> that's her and Xavier's word. Okay, her brother. I'm not like that anymore. No, we're not. No, you you are okay. I mean, you will tell somebody. Hmm. Oh, okay. Not you. No, not no 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 no. no, no. Yeah. But that's how we got through that. Yeah. Yeah. He we created a safe area where we'll come to each other and say, "Hey, baby, I need to be vulnerable right now." And what that means, I don't need you to judge me. I don't want to argue. I just want to be free to share my heart. And I do, that also came from not just um, the home, because, you know, there was, there were some things that my, my parents did communicate well with, but it also came in my previous marriage, where um, it, it, it was, I couldn't be um, all these things here, um, because that individual was not being honest. So, um, I had to learn how to um, do all these things and give John a, a chance to to love me and to forgive me when I, I made a mistake or when I did something wrong. And those things that happened in our marriage made us stronger because it allowed us to communicate and God just made it just happen and the way he just did it, it, just, it was just so awesome and I just thank him for it. So we're gonna move on to the next one. It's um, be genuine. And it says, don't try to be selfless because you want something in return. Don't try to be selfless because you want to make yourself look like a hero. Be selfless because you want to be. Be selfless because you want your partner to be happy. Be selfless because you're, ha you're, you're happy doing it. Be selfless because it's the right thing to do. Be selfless because you because you simply are. So um, yeah, just just be real. Be real. Um, what you see is what you get. Yeah. You know, and that's one of the things that you know in getting married to someone. Woo. You see, so many. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you meet the representative. You don't meet the real person until you get married. Until you get married. Yeah. So that's why, you know, it's one of the things, you know, before you get married, just let your hair down. And, and, you know, of course, everything ain't gonna come out. There's always gonna be some stuff, but just be real, man. Because like my father said, has told me, whatever you deal with while you're dating, magnify that 10 times when you get married. And that's because you guys are all always together, everything's going on. So we're running out of time. But I, I, I know. Say something about the genuine. Okay. Um, okay. Okay, really quick, really quick. Um, and being genuine, and you're saying um, trusting and all that in the genuine, you know, maybe you should think about before you get married if you can be, if you can't be real, you know, with your mate, maybe that person is not for you. And that's why you have to make sure that you're taking that relationship to God. Let's be honest. Um, we know. But I know before um, I became saved or before I met John, I had this ideal of what I wanted a man to be. And that wasn't genuine, you know, because I was making him up in my head. And um, what John and I have, I'm able to be genuine with him because I trust him. And that's only because I asked God for him. I asked God exactly everything that I wanted in a husband is what I got in John, and then some plus. Um, so the being genuine, I was able to be myself, and 
because he loved me, you know, I asked God to send me someone that loved me ugly, you know, just downright dirty and would be by my side. And that's what he gave me. So I'm able to be genuine. I'm able to kind of put my cards down and, you know, bring down the walls and just be real about some, a lot of my flaws and, um, and my struggles and it allowed me to be real with him. I'm always real, but I'm, I'm, I'm able to let walls down and just kind of be myself and go, okay, these are some of the things I need help with. Can you help me? You know, cause you're in this together. You're not operating as your thing and my thing. Whereas we operating as a, our thing. And I think couples, married people forget that because they don't want to lose themselves in their relationship and they don't want to give up. And that comes goes back to the proper mindset. You know, making sure you have the mindset of wanting to be married and wanting to be a partner and being able to um, give up some things and being vulnerable and compromise, you know, that's right. Awesome, man. Awesome. Awesome. So with this coming to an end, I'm just going to read. We're not going to go into any details, but just some other, just uh, the other six topics that we had down here about being selfless. Don't broadcast what you've done for him or her. You know, don't throw it in their face. You know, well, I remember I did this for you and you ain't did nothing for me. Yet. Uh, appreciate his or her selfless gestures for you. You know, accept them in humility. Don't, you know, I don't want to just jump on the men, but, you know, a lot of men sit back prideful yeah man my wife she needs to do this for me you know you need this is what you need to do you you gotta do that you know you're a woman you're supposed to be doing that yeah. no man you accept it you know gracefully you know humbly thankfully you know that your wife ain't your mama <laughs> she ain't your mama um next go the extra mile um, no. Uh, be a good listener. And that's a big that's one. That's a big one. We probably should have said that first. Yeah, that's a big one. Because be a everybody's good talking, listener. Right. Listening. Yeah, yeah. And I thank God that that's a strong area for me. And a lot of that, I give God the glory for it. Uh, a lot of that is because I'm, I'm, I'm in sales. And in sales... Well, that too, but in sales, the reason I'm as good as I am in sales is because I listen. Tip for all the salespeople out there, you listen to people, they will tell you how to sell them, but you gotta listen. Most people don't wanna listen. Most people wanna talk and da 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 And the listening is, all, is not always what's coming out of your mouth. So that's what I wanted to say, because we as women can throw body language like an argument. So, <laughs> so it's not all about what you say, it's not what you, it's what you don't say, you know, in your, your expressions, your body language, your moves, you know. So even that, be a good listener and knowing how to respond to your spouse when you see all those things, you know. All right, and then lastly, establish balance. Establish balance. You know, you can't always just give, 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 give. You know, one of the things that they tell you when you're flying is that in case of an emergency, you put your air mask on first, then you help someone else. Why? You can't be no good to someone else if you're not good to your, you not help yourself. Yeah, you know you got to take care of you to be able to help that other person. So it's wonderful to be selfless and to give, give, and give, and give. But if you find yourself in a relationship where you're just giving, 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 and get nothing in return, you got to put the brakes on and say, "Hey, I got to do for me." Yeah, yeah, but that's what I mean. That's beyond the sound. Yeah, that's true. So, 
definitely in everything. That's why the number one thing is prayer. And, and I'm telling you, if you really want to get an understanding of the power of prayer, please go to YouTube and pull up one of our Sunday morning services on prayer. Um, I promise you, it will bless your soul. Um, one more thing. And don't forget to have fun. You, you got to have fun. You know, what's good is we're married with all these rules <laughs> and not enjoy one another. You know, date one another. Take time. And whatever, whatever it is, that thing that makes the two of you happy, whatever, even if it's just taking a nap together, do it. You know, don't take time for granted because you're here today, gone today. Your spouse or you will not uh, meant to wake up in the morning, not to plan that trip that you're going. So treat every day like it's your last day. So don't sweat the small stuff and always say I love you because when they're gone, the words mean nothing, you know, and you regret not being able to spend that time and laugh and, and enjoy one another. Find those things about each other that got you there in the first place. And 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 focus on the good things. You know, not saying be be, you know, naive about the things you have to take care of, but God wants you to enjoy one another. Amen. Good one, baby. Good one. We will go ahead and end on that. Uh, we want to thank those that are here this evening for coming out. And at the same token, we want to also thank those thank that have joined us online. Uh, we appreciate the support. Uh, and also, uh, we ask that you would join forces with us in supporting us financially. Um, we need um, your finances. We need uh, for you to sow in this ministry, uh, for us to be able to continue to do the great work that God is doing. So uh, at this time, you can, or any time, you can go to our website, click on Give um, through Giveify or Tidely um, or um, Cash App. And then uh, here at the church, um, we have the credit card. I mean, any any kind of way. Uh, makes no difference of the amount. Um, or when, right, we just ask that you give. Father, we thank you. Thank you, God, for this topic of discussion. We thank you, God, that you showed up, Lord, and showed out tonight. We ask, God, that anyone, Lord, that may have been touched by you, Lord, that you continue to allow your sweet Holy Spirit to speak to them, to woo them, to, to guide them closer to you, Lord, and allow them to, to feel your presence. God, we pray for every household tonight. We cover every marriage in the blood of Jesus. God, we ask that you would protect them, Lord, from each other, Lord, and themselves. Father, rule, continue to move, and continue to have your way. Lord, we love you and we thank you. For it is in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, that we pray. And everybody said amen. 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 Well, everybody, we appreciate your time. Thank you guys for coming out that came and uh, those that may be online. We uh, we love you. We thank God for you. Join us Sunday, 8.30 a.m. for one hour for Sunday morning service. God bless you.